Today in series of Doplexus KL interviews, we have with us Dr. Rajesh Rajat. Dr. Rajesh, who is the president of Indian Association of Clinical Cardiology. He is an eminent cardiologist specializing in heart failures, pulmonary embolism, advanced echocardiography and four-dimensional echocardiography. Thank you so much Dr. Rajesh for this interview. Uh, so my first question to you is, what are the complications that are associated with atrial fibrillation? See, before going into the uh, complications, let me tell you why atrial fibrillation sets in. It can be due to old age, it can be due to uh, hypertension, increased alcohol consumption, or it can be due to some genetic disorders, or it can be uh, due to, you know, over-exercising or, you know, extensive sports. So many things which leads to atrial fibrillation. So, what exactly happens with atrial fibrillation if uh, for the patient point of view if, if a patient wanted to know that what exactly the atrial fibrillation is it's a uh, abnormal rhythm of the heart if a heart uh, goes in a, a certain rhythm like lap tap and it goes the first the atrial click then ventricular click you know there are four chambers first atria contracts then ventricle contracts if this contraction doesn't happen in a proper way, then atrium will not contract, ventricle will contract. So in that condition, what happens is when atria is not pumping the blood to ventricle, so when the atria is not contracting properly, the blood will stay there for a long time. <clears throat> the stasis of the blood cause thrombus and this thrombus passes through the major arteries to the brain and m many other organs. So it will end up in a stroke. So if you ask me the major complication of uh, atrial fibrillation, it can be stroke, it can be myocardial infarction, it can be uh, thromboembolism to any part of the body. So today I wanted to emphasize on a particular point because if you see most of the uh, symposiums on atrial fibrillation, they will uh, concentrate on three things. Control the rate, because during the atrial fibrillation, the heart rate goes high up to 150 or more. So they will concentrate on the control the rate. So convert the rhythm. So the abnormal rhythm should be converted to the normal sinus rhythm. They, they may give some drugs or they may give a DC shock. And uh, third thing is anticoagulation. So as this as i said already this patient are more prone for thrombus formation they use some blood thinning agents like uh, warfarin or neuro anti uh, coagulants like uh, dabigatran so most of the atrial uh, atrial fibrillation symposium will concentrate on these three things today i wanted to emphasize on something different so something different is we should go back to the root. So if you go back to the root, there are three factors which causes atrial fibrillation. It can be divided into three groups. One is modifiable, non-modifiable, and some cardiovascular diseases. So what is non-modifiable risk factors? That is age, sex, gender, some genetic predisposition. What are the modifiable things? That is what I am going to stress today. So things which can be modified so that we can prevent the atrial fibrillation. The first one is obesity, decreased physical activity, diabetes, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, lack of proper sleep, stress. So there are ma many major studies came recently which shows that if you decrease your weight in a systematic way you can uh, you know control the af incidence up to 50 percentage that's a you know huge number 
at the same time if you control hypertension you can uh, stop developing af in a common man in the in the proper time at the same time uh, diabetes as well as obstructive sleep apnea all these things if you stop in the proper time you can prevent atrial fibrillation if you prevent atrial fibrillation you can prevent stroke and many other you know comorbidities so uh, this is a silent killer so this uh, modifiable risk factors is same as for the coronary artery disease so people should you know focus on this modifying the risk factors from the day one this is what i wanted to emphasize today uh, so doctor moving on to the next question uh, can you please talk on the management of atrial fibrillation so any doctor who uh, who is approaching an af patients should think three points control the rate convert the rhythm anticoagulation and very essential is maintain the rhythm so for controlling there are uh, uh, many types of drugs like beta blockers calcium channel blockers uh, for uh, for uh, um, converting you can have uh, pharmacological cardioversion as well as electrical cardioversion for anticoagulation you you have uh, uh, warfarin as well as newer anti uh, 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 coagulants like uh, newer oral anticoagulants like dabigatran so for maintaining uh for most of the time uh, we should continue this uh, uh rhythm management and uh, uh proper monitoring of the patient so we should uh, uh, make sure that the patient is in sinus rhythm for a longer period so uh, frequent checkups are important as well as uh, uh, rhythm controlling drugs are important so this is this is how a uh, uh, doctor should approach a atrial fibrillation patient and the patient should understand that uh, uh, all the what i told earlier this risk factors uh, whatever they can modify they should modify and take medicines properly you can live long thank you so much doctor for the interview it was pleasure having you here thank you